Um, I am on my way to an appointment at the, well, I guess it's not at the Roger Maris Cancer Center. It is in the same building, but I'm actually going to see a ears, nose, throat doctor um, that like specializes in oral cancer stuff, I believe. Um, so anyways, I'm running late as usual. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot better about not being late for stuff in the last five months, but I think the reason I end up late for the appointments at the Roger Maris Center or just at Sanford in general is because I don't really look forward to these appointments at all. They suck. They drain my energy. They get me thinking negatively. Um, you know, I'll be doing really well and I'll go to an appointment at the Roger Maris Center and all of a sudden I feel like shit sucks. Um, you know, their statistics and their numbers and their staging and their everything about it just, eh, it's not fun. Um, plus, I think they're full of shit a lot of the time. I mean, they're selling goddamn sugar donuts at a cancer center. What does that tell you? Sugar feeds cancer. Everybody, well, not everybody knows that, but anybody that's dealt with cancer in their life or had known someone that's dealt with cancer knows that sugar feeds cancer cells. So why on earth would a cancer center that's trying to heal cancer be selling sugary, not even selling, giving them away for free, as a matter of fact, um, giving away sugar donuts to the cancer patients? What does... Where's the common sense in that? I think they're trying to kill us, honestly. That's what it seems like. Um, you know, you'd think they'd have some organic fruits and vegetables or something, but no, they gotta sell you sugar donuts, give you sugar donuts. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, so I don't know. The whole thing just sucks. And then the other thing is, is when you're going to the Roger Maris Cancer Center, it's specifically for cancer patients, obviously, so Yes, I realize I have cancer, so yes, I'm a cancer patient, but I don't like to feel like I'm a cancer patient. Because you start feeling like you are, and then it just, you start going down that road of dying, pretty much, and that's not a road I'm trying to go down at all. I'm living with cancer. And when you walk into the cancer center, and these, you know, people are sick and going through chemo and radiation, and they're bald and weak and now you know, everything that goes along with, with the treatments, um, it's sad. It's hard to see, it's hard to be around, and then all of a sudden, when you're surrounded by it, you start to realize that that's what you got going on in your life, too. Um, what I got going on in my life, I guess. Um, and it, I don't know, it just drains me of every positive thing I have going on in my head. I, takes it all away for, you know, a couple days after I, I go here to the San, to Sanford, and it takes me a while to snap back to being positive and happy and not feeling sick. But, so you're probably wondering why the hell are you even going there then? Especially given the fact that I'm probably 99% probably not gonna go through with any of the treatments they suggest to me. I mean, they have three options, surgery, radiation and chemo. None of which I plan on doing. The reason I am going though is because just like any other healing method I've taken on here in the past five months or anything else I've been open to trying, I am open to hearing what they have to say and to see what their opinion on it is. Um, also, in order for me to get a CT scan and um, an MRI and a PET scan, they won't do it unless they think that I'm coming in there and I'm going to do the treatments that they want me to do. If they know that my plan is to not do chemo and not do radiation therapy, they won't give me a CT scan. They won't give me an MRI because I'm not their patient anymore. So as long as they believe that they're talking me into doing chemo and that's what, what it's looking like my plan is, um, then I can get the CT scan and stuff done in order to find out kind of where things are at with my cancer. That's the only way I can really know since it's, you know, it's not like I have like some mass lump on the outside of my body. It's inside of me, so I can't physically really see it. Um, 
so yeah I'm gonna go here and try to keep my head up and not listen to their numbers that they give me and time I have left to live because according to them if I don't start chemo I will be dead in approximately seven months I think since I was given a 12 month life expectancy if I didn't do chemo or radiation therapy and surgery so I do not believe for one freaking second that I'll be dead if I don't do chemo and radiation actually I think the chemo and radiation would be what kills me if that was the route I took they, they failed to tell me at the cancer center that only 2% of people with stage 4 cancer, 2% of them, it, the chemo will work. The other 98%, it doesn't work. If you're at stage 4 cancer, chemotherapy doesn't work in 98% of the patients. Do you think they'd tell you that though? Hell no. So what do you do? You go in there and, you know, you just might be lucky enough to be that 2%, but doubtful. So you go through hell, you get tortured, you get burned, you go through complete fucking hell and then the way your children your family the, your loved ones would have to see you and then all of a sudden you leave this world and that's how they'd remember you and it would be sad it'd be torture for not only me but for the people around me it'd be torturous for my children for my mom for my brothers for my friends it it's not something that I want my family to have to see me go through and it's not something I want to go through myself not, I don't want to torture myself until I leave this world. That's not what I want to do. And, you know, I'm sure many people in stage, with stage 4 cancer probably wouldn't choose the chemo and radiation route if indeed they knew what the chances were that it was actually going to help them. But, like I said, there's many things these doctors don't tell us. So that's why you just got to get online and start doing research yourself and weed out the bullshit and figure out what's real it's kind of a headache but you know it's, it can be done but my biggest advice on all this is don't just listen to one person's opinion on anything because no I don't think anybody's right everybody has their opinion everybody's situation is different and really you got to figure out what's right for you and for whatever you got going on in life and that's exactly what I'm trying to do right now so I'm going to get in here before I'm any later. I will let you guys know how it goes after I'm done.